Hey guys, what is up? My name is Alex and this is The Car Creative and in today's video, we are gonna be reviewing the Sigma 35 millimeter F1.4. And the reason that we're doing that is because it is my absolute favorite lens. And today we are gonna take this lens out and we are gonna be shooting a 2020 Porsche Cayman GT4 in Miami blue. And this guy has his car specced out. It's just absolutely beautiful. So we're using my favorite lens, going to shoot one of my favorite cars, and I'm gonna use only this lens so you guys can see what it looks like for both photo and we're gonna shoot video, both 120 frames per second and 4K. The camera that we are using is the Sony a7 III, so we're gonna be shooting raw, uh, compressed raw photos with that, and then you guys can be the judge of how it looks. Now for me, when it comes to lenses, I'm not a huge fan of diving deep into specs, as I'd rather use the lens, see how it feels, and see how the image goes, but really quickly getting into this, I've got the EF mount, which means I can use it on both my Canon cinema cameras, which we're shooting on now, and then I get the Sigma MC11 adapter to put it onto my Sony lens. Now you can get this as a native Sony E-mount lens and I believe you can also get it with Nikon. The lens goes for around $1,000 Canadian so it might be cheaper for you Americans or anywhere else in the world. Uh, you guys can look up the price on your own or I'll put up the prices here. Uh, it's really well made. It's a super sturdy, hefty lens. The focus ring is really nice. It has like a start place and a finish place, whereas some of the recent Sony lenses actually are kind of like a continuous. It can always go around and around. The glass is really beautiful glass. Uh, I have had zero issues with sharpness with this lens, um, but again, I'll let you guys be the judge when we take this thing out. It does look like there might be a little bit of rain in our forecast for tonight, so me and the Porsche owner are keeping our eye on that, but in that note, I'm not seeing any weather sealing on the Sigma lens. Otherwise, guys, let's get out and shoot this 2020 Porsche Cayman GT4, and it's gonna be a blast. I'm so excited, so let's go. Guys, so we are out here shooting the 2020 Porsche Cayman GT4 and this thing is specced in Miami blue and it looks absolutely perfect. I don't know if I'm actually able to pick up the color in the camera, but the way that it looks here is just stunning. Like it's like teal, but blue, but hints of green in it and it just looks absolutely amazing. So if you ever get a chance to check one of these out in real life, highly recommend it. Everything that you guys are seeing in terms of photography that I'm gonna show you and the videos aside from what we're doing right here is all shot on that Sigma 35 mil lens. So you get a judge for yourself whether or not it looks good. Now all of that B-roll was shot in 120 frames per second on the Sony a7 III. So we're at an eight kind of eight bit color. You guys can be the judge of that. Maybe we'll do some 4K stuff at our next location so I can show you what it looks like. You can see how the autofocus works and that kind of stuff. But for now, let me just show you around the car. So you guys can see he's got this thing really specced out with some amazing little features. It's got the sport carbon fiber bucket seats, yellow stitching yellow seat belts it's just like phenomenal it looks like carbon fiber door sills just incredible like oh man this is the dream guys the dream <laughs> second location we'll see you there so it's really turning into be a, a beautiful night it's kind of like between stormy and not stormy and we're just getting positioned up here but this is our second location with the cool brick building and we're shooting again with a 35 mil so I'll show you some of the photos from this set All right, so we're headed to our last location, hoping we might get some nice light out here. We'll see if that sun will creep back out for us, but heading over there and it's gonna be nice either way, so let's go. Guys, these are the nights that we dream of as car photographers. This light with this car is just 
blowing my mind. It's just looking so good. I'll put up some of the photos that we're getting here. They look so, so, so good. I'm gonna put the 35 mil on the camera again. I'm gonna show you some 4K footage. We've got in-body image stabilization on the A7 III, but the Sigma 35 mil doesn't actually have any image stabilization. So we'll see how that does with the Ronin S and dancing around and hopefully we'll keep some of this nice light around but it just looks so good. No better way to end the day. He's gonna take me for a rip in my dream car, guys. We get to actually experience what the car that we are saving up for, dreaming up for, is gonna feel like to drive. All right, guys, welcome back from the shoot. That was absolutely insane. I love that car, but it just puts such a smile on my face. It's just such a driver's car, and that's what I'm all about, that manual shifting and like being able to peel around a corner and it just sticks. Ooh, it just gets me so amped up. Well, the reason that the 35 mil lens is my favorite is because it gives you still a sense of environment while being able to focus and hone in on the car. So also having that low aperture helps kind of separate that subject from the environment that you're still seeing. Whereas if you go with like, let's say a 24 mil, you might actually start to lose your subject in the environment or a 50 millimeter where you're actually gonna probably lose a bit of what's going on around the environment. Sure, you'll have a great focus on the subject or your car, um, but I think the 35 mil for me is a perfect balance between showing your environment and your subject. The bokeh on this lens I think is really nice, especially paired with the Sony a7 III, the full frame camera. It's really soft how it falls off, but still maintains an incredible sharpness on your subject. And then as well, getting into autofocus when you're shooting at a shallow depth of field, I find that it performs performs really well, even with the MC11 adapter, I'm not really having any issues because you can still get such a low light and then of course the Sony performs really well in low light. It doesn't really do too much hunting, if at all, uh, and the autofocus features work really well. As well with eye autofocus, if you have that feature on your camera, I've noticed that the Sigma lenses still work incredibly well with that and tracking your subject. For video guys, I will let, again, you be the judge of what you think of this lens. The autofocus works really well, again, I love the plane of focus focus that we're getting with it. And again, with autofocus and video, I'll let you guys be the judge of what you guys think of how it looks in camera or on the screen here. But from what I've seen, the autofocus performs really well. Um, having that depth of field again is an amazing thing for being able to shoot in low light. One of the cons, let's say, shooting maybe at 1.4, 1.6, 1.8, is if you're using autofocus, it might have a hard time knowing which details you're trying to focus on. So that was some of the issues that I ran into when I was running around with the Ronin. Um, but otherwise, it performs quickly, smoothly, and I didn't really have any issues with video. How it looks, again, I'll leave up to you, but for me, I love having that bokeh, that shallow depth of field. I think it just really draws your eye to what you're trying to see while still showing a really nice environment. Now, of course, if this is going to be one of your only lenses or the lens that you're looking into, let's talk about what it cannot do for you, which is compression. Something like an 85 millimeter lens or even a 50 millimeter lens, you're gonna get a longer focal length so you can stand back and still get a really good, strong focus on your subject. You'll notice that when you're shooting on longer, more compressed lenses that you're making your subject look, um, 
meaner, like specifically with cars, which is what I shoot, it really brings out the mean, aggressive, muscly tones and helps kind of bulk that car up. Uh, it looks really good for portraits and humans as well, but the 35 mil, you're not gonna get any of that compression if you want to get close to a detail. You really actually have to just walk up and shoot it. I think it still looks good. You can see in some of these rim pictures or the seat pictures, it still looks great with details being able to pull it out with the shallow depth of field, but you are really missing compression. Now for me personally, if I had to choose only one lens to have between let's say an 85 mil or a 35 mil, a compressed lens versus a wider lens, I'm going to take my 30 35 mil lens because the limitations that you have with an 85 is that you're never going to be able to shoot wide with that thing. You're not ever going to get the context. You're just really focusing in on your subject. And that's okay if that's the style of photography that you do. But for me, I love the look of the 35. I love being able to get the environment. If you guys are considering this lens, it gets my huge thumbs up. It's definitely my favorite lens of all time. And for car photography, I think it looks phenomenal. If you guys enjoyed this video, please smash the like button for me because it helps me out a ton and leave a comment down below of what your favorite lens is for car photography as well as if you have any questions for me on what I do or any car photography related questions at all I'm super open to answering your questions down there and otherwise guys please subscribe because it helps out the channel and uh, I'm just really loving doing this and hanging out with you guys so anyways we will see you in the next video guys take care